Hey, welcome back. It's time for another Dueling Excel podcast. I'm Bill Jelen from Mr. Excel. I'll be joined by Mike Gurren from Excel is Fun. This is our episode 129, Median of the Last 10 Cells. All right, so today's question sent in by DigiDerek123 at YouTube. If there's a way to use Excel to calculate a rolling median, whereas new entries are added to the column, Excel will calculate the median for the 10 most recent entries, ignoring all previous entries in the column. So, uh, here we'd want to get the last 10. I'm watching in the name box up there to the above A1, 10 rows times one column. We want to get a median of that, but he doesn't want to have to manually select the last 10 entries each time a new entry is put in the column. So, to me, that is a perfect use for offset. Offset's going to need uh, to calculate where the start is so uh, how many numeric entries I'm going to use count not count a I'm going to ignore the uh, heading and it, of course my method is going to assume that there are no blanks you can't skip any cells you're just going to enter numeric entries all the way down uh, where does entry number one start all right so we have 13 entries it means the last one's in row 14 and the first one is in row 5 so the formula here is equal 13 minus 8 uh, but there's a funny thing with offset um, we can't specify where something starts, we have to say how many rows it is below a, an actual cell. So, I can start from F1, I can't start from F0. Um, so, I'm going to change this question, where does entry 1 start in relation to F1? And that is going to have to be uh, H2 minus 9, H2 minus 9. So, that way from F1, we're going to go down 1, 2, 3, four cells. All right, so to build the offset, uh, we'll call this median of last 10. I always build the offset first, equal offset from F1, and we'll lock that with the F4 key, comma, how many rows down? It is the answer from there, comma, how many columns over? Zero columns over. How many rows tall? 10 rows tall. How many columns wide? One column wide. All right, so there's our formula uh, up there, equal offset. Offset is going to return 10 cells, so we have to put it in a wrapper function. And luckily for us, the wrapper function that we need is median, uh, easy to do. So right there, equal median of that whole thing, 2580. Let's add a uh, really small cell here, and 2474. Let's test, equal median of these last 10, this is what uh, Derek did not want to have to do, uh, but we get the exact same answer, and we'll, uh, let's see, delete here, delete that last entry, and edit this, just by grabbing the blue outline, not in a corner, press enter, 2580, it looks like it's working. All right, now, did we need these extra helper cells here? Uh, certainly not, so that was count of F and uh, minus 9, so right here where we had pointed to H5, we could say equal count of F colon F minus 9, and there we go, yep, as we enter more items, let's just enter a thousand here in four new cells, then it calculates based on the last 10. How by changing the uh, the yellow boxes there, that's Alt O D, conditional formatting, uh, edit rule, I said use a formula to determine which cells to format, row of F2 greater than or equal to count of F minus 8. Uh, why 8 here and 9 here? Because this had to be in relation to F1, uh, this was just using row numbers, so it will highlight for me which ones are included in the medium. All right, Mike, let's see what you have. Thanks, Mr. Excel. Hey, offset function to create a dynamic range for the last 10 values entered in a column, absolutely beautiful. Now, the median then takes these, uh, the offset spits out a range of values, F9. And what does the median do? It actually takes the list, sorts them. If there's an odd number, it takes the um, average of the middle two. And if you look down here, 1607, that's exactly what that does. Now, why is the offset such a beautiful solution? Let's go over here, and the funny thing is, 
in chapter 13 of my upcoming array formula book, I use this, I do this exact example, but I show you how to create a dynamic range with the index function. And it was kind of silly of me not to show offset because offset is much easier. The actual formula is much shorter, easier to type out. So why would you ever use index to create a dynamic range? Well, offset is volatile and for large data sets. Volatile just means it recalculates often, and if you have a large data set, it slows down calculation. So if you want to create a dynamic dynamic range with the index. Here's how you can do it. Now, index normally, you give it an array of values. And I'm going to highlight as far down below to accommodate all possible data entry and uh, values that are going to be entered. I'm going to lock it. And then it just needs to know the relative position in the row number argument. Now, I want to see if I can look up the last number here. So I'm going to use the match function, which looks up a number and returns the relative position. And the trick to looking up last number is you give the lookup value some big number. So 9.9e plus 307. That's approximately the biggest number that Excel knows. You say, hey, big number, look up, look through here. F4 and leave that last argument off. It'll do the uh, approximate match, and it will always get the last relative position. So if I highlight that in F9, 13, that is the last position. Now, watch this. Right now, index simply looks up the last number in the column, 20, uh, 2044. Now, that's totally silly. Index is programmed to look up values unless you put the index function into the context of a cell reference. So watch this. I copied it, Control-V, and what is the context? You put a colon. Now, this would be a silly dynamic range. It would be A14 to A14. So all I need to do is change this row number. Right now, it's F9, 13, and I need it to be 1, 2, 3, 4. So I simply subtract from the match very carefully. The 10, F4, that would give me one too many. I need nine like Mr. Excel, so I add one back in. Now, if I highlight this, F9, that fourth position will work perfectly. So two indexes will look up, highlight F9, the um, first value, which was a cell reference, the last value, and return a range of values, just like the offset. Now, notice it's an array of values, and you think that for um, uh, any formula element that returns an array of values would require Control-Shift-Enter. But actually, index and match return a range. So when I put it inside a median or any other wrap for function like sum, it will understand it perfectly. So that's how you can do it with index. But what if you had empty cells? Notice relative position 4, both offset and index, are actually calculating this uh, using this value here, and they're seeing a 0, which might mess up the calculation. What we need is the, are those values right there, because there's an empty cell. I want the last 10 actual values. Relative position 1, 2, 3, not 4. So check this out. We can amend this, copy. And really, it's this first index looking up the first cell reference. We don't want A5. We want A4. And if I highlight this in F9, remember that's 4, and I want 3. So let's see if we can create a formula element. Whoops, I clicked Escape. That will get relative position 3, not 4. Now, the way you create an array of relative positions in a formula that is robust is you highlight all of the uh, cells there, F4. That'll give me 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And I don't want that. I want 1, 2, 3. So I'm going to subtract row of the first one. Now, right now, that'll give me 2 minus 2, which would be 0. So you have to add 1 back in. Now, that little formula element to create uh, an array of relative positions will work no matter if you insert rows below or uh, move it around, F9. Notice that's all the relative positions. And I'm really after this 3. So guess what? I'm going to eliminate all the row positions that have empty cells, all these ones down here, by using the if function. So I'm going to say if. And the logical test right here will do an array operation, which means this will require Control-Shift-Enter, is number. Right, we're after only the cells with numbers, F4. That's the logical test, comma. The value of true will be all those relative positions. And guess what? We don't put value of false, because if we leave this argument out of the if and it gets a false, it will um, 
put the actual value false. So when I hit F9, there is a way to get all the relative positions, only the, the positions that have numbers. Now, we need what? The tenth biggest, which would be 3. So guess what? I put that array of values into the large. And I say, comma K, give me the tenth largest. Now, this will require Control Shift Enter. I use Control Shift and Enter to enter the array for me. You can see the curly brackets up there. That's the three we need. So now this will work no matter how many empty cells there are. It will always get the last 10 values. So I come up here and write there. Instead of using that, I'm going to Control V and use that whole big thing right there. I click on that argument. Now this is going to require Control Shift Enter. And boom, there we have it. Now if you were to calculate the median for all of those, it would that's the correct answer. Now if you wanted to do it with offset, guess what? That if we have empty cells, we're still going to have to do something crazy like uh, that little bit right there. All right, throw it back to Mr. Excel. Wow, Mike, that was an awesome trick using the large comma 10 to get the uh, position. What a, an awesome thing. People should go uh, uh, pre-order your book, Control-Shift-Enter at uh, Amazon. That is an amazing trick. All right, well, I want to thank everyone for stopping by. We'll see you next week for another Dueling Excel podcast from Mr. Excel, and Excel is fun.